السلام عليكم and some art to like that Aki, basically for the viewers I want you to explain your opinion on the usage of musical instruments Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam First of all, Aki, I won't offer my opinion because the opinion of uh, of a student of knowledge or a person who's a student of a student of knowledge uh, my opinion doesn't mean much but uh, what I'll give you is my understanding okay. uh, of the issue as it has come to us from the sources. Um, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he made um, the use of the drum legal yeah. um, at the time of marriage during warfare so as to create among the troops yeah. uh, some, some, some sort of discipline for marching to keep their spirit. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu he also uh, uh, allowed the beating of the duf uh, at the time, at the time of marriage. Okay, uh, and on one particular occasion, he said to Abu Bakr why didn't he uh, allow uh, some of the people uh, to beat the duf? Because the people of the Ansar, they like the beating of the duf. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he encouraged the beating of the duf to announce the marriage, okay? Uh, but the duf is a special instrument. It's not a snare drum. It's not a bongo. You see, it's a, it's a basic uh, a piece of wood with, uh, with a skin stretched over top of it that is used for hitting. It's like something they call the tambourine without the little uh, shells on it, without the, the little metal things on it. It's just a simple beating of the duf that makes a sound. Now, aside from that, the Messenger of Allah says him, he forbade uh, specifically wind instruments, brass instruments, the percussion instruments, the string instruments. So all these instruments, string, brass, um, wind, percussion, these are all the sophisticated instruments that's being used today in music. So it means that the process and forbade it, it means it's forbidden. Whether to be used individually or collectively or syncopatically, it's forbidden. Forbidden means haram. Haram means we shouldn't do it. But there is no punishment for it. There was never any punishment in the time of the process for people who used music. There was no punishment that I know of during the time of the Khulfa al Rashidin for people who did music but there is what is called ta'zir. Ta'zir means that according to the discretion of the Khalifa or the, the person who is the wali al amr or the authority of the Muslims, if he has authority and, and people are using musical instruments, which the Prophet ﷺ told us we cannot use, he can use what is called ta'zir. That is a punishment which is less than hudud. Okay. Meaning that he could, he could put them on house arrest he could give them some corporal punishment. He could find them. He could do many different things to do what? To act as a deterrent from that becoming a major movement and a major thing that people do. Okay. Now, that would ask us the question, then why is music being freely used all over the Muslim world? Because the rulers permit it to their benefit, to put the people to sleep, to give the people an occupation so people don't think. And that's why the new phenomena among the young Muslims is nasheeds. Because people are pushing the nasheeds forward to cause young people to forget about the Quran, to forget about the Sunnah, to for forget their Aqidah, to forget the serious issues, to forget about community, to forget about leadership, to forget about empowerment, to forget about their responsibility in the society. So this new dangerous fad that some people are ushering forward, which is called the new halal music. It is nothing but a new sophisticated haram. And Muslims should leave, leave it alone. Now for me, I don't say we should condemn the young people. I don't say we should boycott them. I don't say that we should point fingers at them and call them names. But we should discourage them and give them something better. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just bless us for that. But as for this listening to music, these iPods and these kafirs, these monkey singing, donkey looking, animal singing, dancing, dressing kafirs, who most of the Muslims are idolizing and following, 
wearing their shirts and wearing their clothes. This is the filthiest of habits and inclinations that young people, Muslims, could be following. And definitely, the music they're listening to, it's haram. There's no doubt about it. It's haram. Suggest that the Muslims uh, go to uh, the Sahih al Bukhari and the, the Bab uh, of musical instruments. Uh, they should look into into the books of Fiqh. They should uh, uh, look to the works of the of the living scholars and the scholars who have passed us by. Uh, they should ask the students of knowledge who have valid, uh, uh, certifiable knowledge and references. And there's so much information, but there's absolutely nothing called halal music. Those who are calling music halal, these are the people who are introducing into this religion something that they can make profit from. And through doing so, they are poisoning and they are undermining the morals of our young people. And Allah, he knows the best.